Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Today I bring in Joe Joan Fowler. Is that right? That is perfect. Most people get it wrong, but that is... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've, I've always been known to butcher people's names and it normally okay. takes a couple of runs at it. But um, <laughs> thankfully, I only, I only had to do one take there of it. Um, Joe, welcome to the show. Obviously, we don't know each other directly, but we have... A, you well you have an employee uh, as in anthony lee who's one of my good friends and i've known for a number of years so it's been it's great to get you on the on the on the show so do you want to get the audience a little bit of background on yourself and what you do uh yeah so i am founder and ceo of what was originally uh zon blast we created the quote unquote blasting space the launching space in 2014 and i say we but it was really just me for the first few months until anthony came on board um, you know, I've been a seller uh, since 2014, very familiar with the Amazon space. Uh, we pivoted in 2017 to what is now called Six Leaf, uh, which I think more appropriately kind of encompasses uh, who we are. And, um, and you know, we, we, we niche down, we specialize. Uh, and, you know, recently over the past six months, we've been really digging into data, accuracy of data, and really ensuring that the end user, the seller, uh, gets the information that they need to be able to, to make accurate, accurate choices, accurate decisions in their, in their business. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, but today you've got a tool that you're launching soon. You've got your own uh, Facebook group. Do you want to remind the audience? Yeah. That? Yeah. Uh, the Facebook uh, group is called brand owners, hashtag brand owners by six leaf. If you just yeah. search for hashtag brand owners, that was previously a paid group known as Zon squad. Yes. Um, and we wanted to open it up cause we, we really like the, the community in there just cause they're, um, they're, how do I, how do I, some of the larger groups out there, there's a lot of noobs, there's a lot of gurus kind of, and we kind of, we kind of vet people. Um, so it's kind of like this close knit community, which is kind of like a grown up version of what Zon squad was. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that was part of the, and that was also part of the, the quote unquote hashtag brand owners movement that I kind of, I was sort of initiating late last year because I got tired of gurus. Yeah. So the idea with the group is that, um, are you still, would you accept, um, like listeners of the show and stuff into the group, but obviously you're vetting. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I, absolutely. There's a few simple questions that people answer and we, we do look at the answers. So cool. So no gurus allowed. That's good. Okay, so first things first, let's just, um, let's try and not address things, but let's, let's take it back. Let's like where this kind of conversation for me come from as well is that I had Greg Mercer on the show. Hmm. He, um, he was covering some of the data that he was doing with Jungle Scout. And I really liked what he'd done in the sense of he was able to say, right, guys, there's 80 hours worth of data, plus there's a load of spreadsheets. Yeah. Go off and have a play with them do your own thing. I like that rather than this throw up the guru screen grab who talk shit and, and pretend like they're doing all these things and, and they're just manipulate the screen grab. I mean, that's two things happen in here. It's like you either hiding in plain sight or you've got nothing to hide. And I like, I like Greg a lot. I think he's a stand up guy in the community. I was, I want to have had him on the show anyway, but I, I like what he does. I've, I've had a couple of guys out of your group holding me to task and saying, this data is wrong. You need to get him back on. He's making a mockery and all this kind of stuff. And then I've got yourself that I'm seeing your group and you're like, actually, our data is stronger and this, that and the other. But I want you to take up the story here. I think you're going to be able to tell it better. But the ultimate goal of this podcast for me is yeah. that whoever comes out with the, the best tools with the most accuracy just means that everyone raises their game and then becomes one winner. And that's the community. So 100%. do you want to just unfold and unpick where you are with this tool at the moment? Yeah, well, first of all, let me say, you know, John Scout and any, any, also the other companies out there, um, you know, Viral Launch, Helium 10, have an immense respect for, for what they've created. I mean, the, the significant companies like John Scout in particular, mm -hmm. I kind of view them in our space as being the more grown up SaaS yeah. out there. Um, yeah. They really, you know, leveled up. Um, yeah, so, so that being said, you know, going back to 2014, and it was even before um, Jungle Scout came out, which I, if I remember correctly, was like early 2015, late 2014, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. There was a, there was a sales estimation tool uh, being used as a marketing tool for 
a certain three word uh, educational course, which I won't say just because mm-hmm. I don't want them uh, getting annoyed. Um, it was incredibly inaccurate. I actually chose like my first two or three products based on their recommendations because they said that they're doing this this number of sales per day or per month. I forget which what which it was. Turns out it was like literally four to six times their their estimations was like literally four to six times what the actual sales were. And I know that because my own products actually wound up in their list. Jonas Guy came along and they kind of reoriented the space, revolutionized the space in, in my mind. And of course, our launch and uh, Helium 10, I forget when they came out with their Chrome extension. And all the, you know, there's probably half a dozen to maybe more uh, that are in that space. And the underlying theme for each of these Chrome extensions is it's, it's founded in estimated sales. Like really think about it, like the, the people listening to this now, uh, how many of you would continue to use Jungle Scout, Helium 10, Bar Launch, whoever, if it didn't have estimated sales or if it just gave like a relative measure? And speaking of relative measure, that's usually how the discussions go uh, in Facebook groups that I've seen over the years. That, you know, there'd be a lot of people post up a screenshot of like Jungle Scout and say, hey, is this a viable space to get into? And some people chime in, hey, don't rely on those numbers. They're not accurate. And then it'll ultimately drill down to, um, hey, use them as a relative measure, which is perfectly valid. I, I think I think using it as a relative measure from ASIN versus ASIN as opposed to an absolute measure saying, hey, this ASIN is doing 100 units a day. Can't really, can't really run with that um, as is. And that was something I've already, I've always known. My network has always known. We preached it in Zon Squad, um, even in, in brand owners now at this point. They're not accurate numbers. And it always bothered us. It always kind of got under our skin because we knew that particularly, you know, the noobs coming into the space would rely so heavily on those on those numbers. They would say, hey, this is a great space to get into. Look, the top product is doing 100 sales a day. They get into it, oh, it's only doing 25 sales a day. And it was kind of, it's kind of like the, how my first product, my couple products uh, went early on. And, you know, I think it was 2016, 2017, we saw that space, the Chrome extension space kind of blowing up a little bit. And we were like, hey, should we get in here? And there were two things that held us back. I mean, the technical know-how isn't, isn't extraordinary. It's, it's not, there's not a big technical feat to literally create an extension in Chrome. There's a lot of documentation on it. It's not a big deal. Um, the problem came with the SMA and sales. Number one, I wasn't sure that we could get any better than what was out there. And um, number two, we, we were at the time really focusing on just being like truly unique. Like we started with Zomblast, it was completely new, revolution, revolutionized the, the marketing space, the SEO space on Amazon. And we kind of continued that trend with all of our releases since then. And I was like, nah, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna go into what, other, what all the other guys are doing. Fast forward to late last year, about six to eight months ago, and we started becoming aware and kind of learning about machine uh, machine learning um, and how this might be a viable solution to creating an accurate sales algorithm. And, and of course, knowing that that's the foundation of these extensions, that's the, it's the entire hook, if you will, in getting people to use these extensions, um, we kind of, we, we dove in. And as you know, I think it was December, uh, we we contracted with some data scientists that um, have just gone to town. They had their own data sets to use. They're kind of specializing in Amazon. Um, we have our own data sets to use that that are opt in only. Um, you know, none of if, in case any clients are wondering, we don't use your data. You have to literally opt in. And actually, it's an invite. So if you haven't gotten an invite, you're not you're not uh, your data hasn't you know wasn't used to mold the algorithm. Um, but we're talking literally tens to maybe hundreds of millions. I, I don't even know offhand of rows of data that have helped create this machine learning algorithm that leans on, among other things, BSR, search volume, and history for a given ASIN. And the evolution of that algorithm uh, has produced something that has gone beyond my wildest expectations. Our target was a average error rate of 15%, we seem to be hitting like 6%. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the, the Cliff's Notes version of the evolution of how we avoided the space, uh, saw the problem in the space, because it's just too darn accurate, um, and where we are today. And you know, specific to, to 
Greg and, and Jungle Scout, again, I totally respect them. And I love the fact, like you said, I love the fact that they put their spreadsheet out there, hey, go to town on it. I think that's awesome. Um, I, I wasn't a big fan of how they <laughs> chose uh, median as the sole indicator. Hmm. Uh, I think I think part of that is because if they looked at mean, the viral launch actually did better. Um, I think it was, it was, I don't want to misstate, but I think our launch came in like 10%, maybe 15% better if I'm not mistaken. Well, from your results or from the published results of Greg's? Yeah. Yeah. From so viral launch versus jungle scout, I think, let me, give me a moment. I'll pull it up. Um, the mean, where is the mean? Sorry, bear with me one moment. I want to be accurate in my words here. So the mean for, so in looking at Jungle Scout's recent May 29th data mm -hmm. that they put out, we're coming in at 16, or excuse me, 6% mean absolute percentage error. Viral launch comes in second at 31%, Jungle Scout at 44%. And for median, the metric that Jungle Scout uses, uh, we actually come in at 1%. Median yeah. error rate, Jungle Scout at 16, Viral Launch at 21%. Um, so, and, and yes, yeah, so that's, you know, as we were creating this algorithm and I was posting in brand owners, of course, um, you know, doing my own analysis on I was like, hey guys, these, these are really inaccurate. I was looking at standard deviations. I was looking at variances. I was looking also, I, I think a, a, a particular, as kind of a layman metric to look at, but the number of, uh, results that were residing within like 10%, 15% error rate or better. And we're getting to like 90, 95%, whereas the other guys are like in the one to 5% range. Uh, so we're incredibly precise. We're incredibly accurate. And um, so I, I'm, I'm excited where there's going to be a, there's gonna be a blog post uh, yeah. very soon today. Hopefully that's going to be sure into. that the other companies will, take a look at and do yeah. what you've done is done the, you know, dissecting, but <laughs> well, there, the there's, a caveat. there's a real yeah. one. Go on. quick. I, we didn't get permission from our, from our beta users to include the ASIN. However, I think I'm going to include a note specific and only for viral launch helium 10 and jungle scout basically saying, Hey, if you want to run your own numbers, Two, two requirements. Number one, we need to get permission from our beta users. I don't want to share their ASINs if they don't yeah. want us sharing their ASINs. Um, and two, that they don't share the ASINs when they run their own. Data. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so no, the, the bit I was going to get to there is that you're doing what similar to what Greg is doing. You're publishing your own notes, and I'm sure that yeah. Manny and Casey, we just had Casey over the weekend, like yeah. um, last week when he came into town with Anthony. Um, yeah, it's just everyone's going to add their own approach to this. And the big question is, and we said about this off call, and I said, like, do we know the numbers are right? Only for the fact, right, if we look historically, you've got these big, well-funded companies, viral launches just uh, raise some money, Manny's yeah. well, um, well-versed well financially, and so is, uh, of course, Jungle Scout. They were like the originals, right? So they've yeah. all got... And amazing teams that work behind them, very engaged, solid data scientists, engineers, algorithm experts, and everything else. And like any good upstart, you've come along and you're now doing your thing and you're going, hey, guys, look, this is much better, right? So what we've got to look at here is that if they've been doing this for a number of years, some longer than others, but then you've got the right numbers and you've brought in an, an external team, you know, yeah. it's like, the, how do we get to the level of the confidence that these numbers are right? But, it, but what you got to look at as well is that we live in a world where startups come along and there's these big, massive companies and yeah. they don't take them out of the game, but this small team just completely knocks the big guys out of the way. So it, all of this is feasible. It's yeah. just, how do we get to that stage where, who's right and is there a right does that make sense in terms of the numbers obviously <laughs> yeah data needs to be right to be accurate but you see where i'm coming from if you look around the edges yeah i mean in terms of in terms of who is right and, and i'm actually going to discuss this in um the blog post uh I, I discussed the difference between accuracy and precision so like accuracy it's best it's best visualized um it's most often visualized as shooting an arrow at, at, at a target mm -hmm. accuracy is how 
is how close you are to, to the bullseye. Precision mm-hmm. is how often you, or, or how consistent your shot group, if you will, is. Yeah. So like you can be incredibly precise, you can be uh, and incredibly inaccurate. That's like shots all over the place, or you can be very inaccurate, very precise, where your shot group is is, is nice and tight, but it's off. It's off center. It's off the bullseye. Basically, everybody is very inaccurate, very imprecise. They're not on the bullseye. Um, That's a bold statement, but yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be illustrated. Uh, You know, they have, they had a whisker, they had a box plot with, with whiskers and, and our, you know, ours is, is tiny. Like our, our, this is going to be super obvious. So in terms of who's right at this point, if if we're going to stack who, somebody against somebody, we're, we're at the top at the moment. Yeah. Um, And, uh, you know, in terms of you know small companies coming along, I love the, I love I love us being referred to as a as a startup because we are in this particular space. We and are. I didn't mean that in a disrespectful never, way. No, no, I'm just saying. I didn't think it of, a, yeah, I mean, you know, you innovated the launch service. Yeah, pretty much, didn't you? A lot of people followed, but as they're diversified and gone more software, you've gone exactly services, and now you're moving more into software. I know that with Bridge and things like that, you've been doing this over years, but this yeah, is, there's. Uh, a big software play for you. Whereas Jungle Scout, majority of the time, from my reckon, like from my understanding, they've always been software. You know, Manny's always been software. Casey moved yeah, from, from, from from service based to, to software. I think only 8% is launch based now. The rest is in and around the software and some of the other services that they provide. But I think with you guys, you've been, you've, yeah. you've taken a different route to get here. And this is probably your, your biggest moment in terms of SaaS today, isn't it? I agree. A hundred percent. I agree. Um, there was a realization that we had kind of last year that, you know, we were, we tended to be very, very niche. Zomblast was one of those things. And so I've, I've, I need to conceptualize this a little bit more, but there's in terms of like the Amazon life cycle, there's the, there's the person that comes in, they, they do the, they do the niche research, then they do the keyword research, then they do the product search, they, they work with the supplier, then they launch it then they're growing and scaling it. Then there's a positioning for scale or for sale rather kind of a thing. And, and Zomblast always hit like a certain very specific portion of the life cycle before a certain point, they don't need it. They don't want it. And then after a certain point, there's no need for it anymore because they have their own audiences. They can do their own thing. And we're very niche. We specialize in it. We're the best at it. You know, heat seeker still to this day continues to be the best URL in the space. Um, and I loved the idea at the time to, to stay super niche. And so when we came out with the suite tools, it was like it hit on the certain parts in the, in the seller life cycle after Zomblast in particular. And when we just kind of got tired of, of people relying on inac- just inaccurate data where, you know, basically it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, a hundred sales a day for a particular ASIN or a thousand sales a day uh, for a particular month for a particular ASIN plus or minus 50%, which basically makes it useless. Um, you know, we, we decided that we're going to go, we're going to go wider. Um, and, you know, speaking to, Larger company. Obviously, I don't know the internal workings of of the you know these larger companies to any great degree, other than what they discuss publicly. But I think one of the maybe perils, if you will, of larger companies who are branching out, diversifying, I, th- I think is a word that you used, is they, I guess, see how to phrase it. Maybe forget about how to specialize in certain areas. And so we've been. I mean, I've been unbelievably focused on this for the past six, six plus months. Like there's parts of the business that I just, I gave to Anthony to run or Barkus to just like run with. I've been hundred percent focused on developing Phoenix and the, we call it the rise algorithm, which is the fundamental part. It's called, uh, it's short for uh, real time integrated sales engine. Just a cute little name to kind of stick with the, the Phoenix rising from the ashes kind of a situation. Um, but uh, it, it allowed being a smaller team that is specifically working with a team of data scientists and, and particularly people who focus in machine learning as allows us to, uh, to really kind of drill in and nail down. And so like there was evolutions of our data algorithm where the other guys probably would have settled at, at one point. Like if there was a version in, I think, March where we got to like a 15% error rate, which was actually the target. Um, and the standard deviation of, I think maybe 60%, which was again, better than the other guys. 
And I was like, no, that's not enough. Let, let's work a little bit more. Let's spend another month. Uh, and we went through two more iterations to where we are uh, today, which is going to be published in, um, in the blog post. So, Cool. And so where would you, I mean, without spelling it, spelling it out, where would, would you say that the adjustments that you've done, like the guys have all got their data scientists, uh, data scientist teams, et cetera. And like, for instance, when I had Greg on, I think their investment yearly for estimates, they spend around a million dollars a year. He said that publicly. And so when you spend in that kind of money and you've got that kind of power and bandwidth to work with, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't leave much room for others if they don't have that kind of budget. So you've put an external team together to do this. Do you think it's because your pr- approach was different here, the way that you look? Yeah, at- yeah. I, I don't necessarily buy into. I, I know it's a. I know it's easy to run with. Oh, hey, there was more money thrown at this, and, and therefore assume it was better or it was. Or it's, oh yeah, no, but you know what he was saying is is that the sales estimates is an expensive business, but very important. And you have to invest in it, you know. Yeah, we're we're not spending anywhere near that. We don't we yeah. don't have to spend anywhere near that. I think it. I I would be curious, um, you know, if a good portion of that was just from the scale, from the size of their user base to, to be able to handle that load. Yes. Obviously, this isn't even out yet, so we have you know our beta group and internal team using it. So it'll be interesting to see how that scales in terms of cost going forward. Um, but yeah, it's not anywhere near that. If I had to ballpark, it's under ten thousand a month. To, right. to be able to to be able to run what we're doing right now. Cool. And so, when are you planning on on launching and opening up the beta a little more? I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping for Thursday. I'm hoping for for next Thursday launch. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of there's a couple of non algorithm bugs that we want to work out, and we're working with our beta users because there's like certain categories that uh, are causing um, some weirdness. And then, like I saw Casey the other day, he pointed out um, Amazon is presenting certain uh, blocks. Uh, new blocks of, of search elements, which is kind of causing some issues. So we're going to work around that. Um, but I'm hoping for Thursday. Uh, those of us in the in the software world know that uh, we often yeah. miss we often miss timelines. Yeah. But uh, we're not we don't have a firm date just yet. But today, I'm going to get the blog post out. Uh, Monday, I think Tony is going to get a uh, a series of I think two or three posts out to kind of follow up and, and kind of. Um, a funnel for lack of a better word mm-hmm. going and really diving into the data and where we're going in terms of like, it just as a teaser, like AI focused, um, you know, orientation going forward. And then hopefully that follows with Thursday launch. If not Thursday, it'd be shortly thereafter, but everybody will know about it. <laughs> soon Sounds enough. Good. So if, how would, what's the best way if we wrap here, what, what's the best way for people to reach you? I would say at this point, probably brand owners, uh, the yeah. brand owners group, group uh, hashtag brand owners, um, we're pretty darn active in there and, um, you know, we would love to, love to have you. Cool. And at the moment, as you said, everything's going in and around Thursday and that's going to be open beta. You're moving from closed beta. How many have you got in closed beta at the moment working on it? Um, I want to say a dozen right now, plus the internal team of, of about a dozen. Um, so, you know, yeah. we have a, we have a good sample size, but, uh, but we're going to be opening that up on probably Thursday, I think. Cool. Sounds good. Well, look, let's, uh, let's catch up again soon. It'll be good to yeah, see absolutely. how it goes with the journey and see how, uh, how it all pans out at the end as well. But right. you know, thank you for your time, guys. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you again in the next few days. Take care.